Hey, all Cinephile Mike, your friendly neighborhood Cinephile here, and we are on the penultimate day of any week with Day 75, and today I am talking about G-Kids' Ernest and Celestine, A Trip to Gibberushia, written by Guillaume Montalon and Sebastien Orcel, and directed by Julianne Chang and Jean-Christophe Roger. This film had a domestic box office take, small one, of $17,446, with an international box office take of $4,229,116, for a total of $4,246,562, which is only about a little bit more than half of what the original film, Ernest and Celestine, took over 10 years ago. Now, award season-wise... Like The Inventor yesterday, this film is nominated for Best Independent Animated Feature, solely. But it's also worth referencing that this film was nominated for Best Animation Feature at the César Awards, which is France's version of the Academy Awards. Now, interesting, this is the only love that this film received, where the original film, Ernest and Celestine, in 2012, was Oscar-nominated for Best Animated Feature, won the Cesar for Best Animated Film, as well as six Annie Award nominations, including Best Animated Feature. So not as much awards season love for the sequel. Does it live up? Well, let's talk about it. For those unfamiliar with the first film, it's worth the watch. A quick spoiler-free of the first, in a world where bears and mice fear one another, bears live above ground, mice live in the sewers, mice take bears' teeth, so that they have a means to survive. Quite entertaining. We have two outcasts, Ernest, a musical bear, and Celestine, an artistic mouse, who meet and form a friendship that is frowned upon, but they fight for this friendship despite what people say, and they create a family in and of themselves. And now, in its sequel, we find that they are happy, they're living together, they're roommates, and now the winter has passed. Ernest is waking up from his three-month hibernation. Celestine is excited to have her friend back. She wants to hear him play his violin, lovingly referred to as the Strata Bear, yes. <laughs> but tragically, after an accident, the Strata Barius breaks, and we learn that the only way to get it fixed is for Ernest to go to his old hometown of Jibberushia, which he refuses to do. So, Celestine sets off to do this, all by her little mousy self. Sneaking off, she leaves a note, and Ernest quickly follows after her, and their adventure will begin. Why is Ernest so afraid to go back to Jibberushia? According to Ernest, it was a lively, music-filled town. And he is a musician. Well, we will see the reasons why Ernest left, and now that he has returned... You will see that Jibberushia has changed, and is it for the better? And it's up to Ernest and Celestine to save the day. Now, Ernest and Celestine, A Trip to Jibberushia, is drawn in simple, delightful 2D animation, looking like the children's book Come Alive. While it doesn't have quite all of the charm of the original, it's still racked with some good one-liners and the messages of acceptance and fighting for what you believe in. The themes are simply put enough so that they are accessible to small children, but not so much where an adult watching it would get tired of watching it. The themes of acceptance and family are also clearly shown and how we need to love one another and support one another's decisions. Now, while the voice cast is not the collection of known names that did the first one, they are comparable in the tone for the two leads of Ernest and Celestine. All the other characters are new in the sequel, and they keep the story moving. Also, I want to highlight the importance of music. That seems to be the theme with these films this week, right? Leo the musical, the inventor the musical. While this film is not a musical, there are many musical numbers because music is a supporting player in this film. So the score by Vincent Courtois is quite delightful as, you know, different instruments and numbers are played by the residents of Jibberushia. So for me, this film is a quick, moving 80 minute actually 75 minute four star film now given the series by gabrielle vincent has several more titles in the ernest and celestine series i actually look forward to see if they'll do a third one maybe i don't know if i have to wait another 10 years but we'll see 
If you would like to watch this adorable little film, it is available to rent on most digital platforms, but there is no streaming information available at this time. All you need to know, if you didn't watch the first one, you don't have to watch the first one. I kind of summed up what you need to know, so you can go right into the second. Just know that these two are friends to the end. So there you have it. One more animated film to go, and as I started this week with a live-action film with animation, Cocaine Bear, I'm going to be closing out the week with a live-action film with animation as well. As always, if you like what you heard here, please subscribe to the channel, continue spreading the word. There's so much more cinematic goodness coming, including, if you haven't checked out yet, my Oscar prediction videos. Those will help you when you're coming up with your picks for your ballots. I'm doing the research. I'm telling you who I think should win. So hopefully I save you some time and effort. <laughs> As always, you can follow me, Cinephile Mike, on all social media platforms and Letterboxd. See everyone tomorrow as we wrap any week. And until then, this is Cinephile Mike saying, take a break and watch something new.